Every progress and breakthrough starts with disbelief, riots and drama. That's not a warning, that's a sign something big is coming. And it's happening right now, today. In 1609, Galileo built a telescope and gave a strong evidence that Earth moves in space, and the church locked him up for spreading what they believed to be heretic nonsense. And mind you, that was way after Dark Ages, right at the end of Renaissance during the actual birth of modern science. Gutenberg created a printing press and made books accessible to everyone, and religious and political leaders banded to stop ideas ideas from spreading. Now imagine life without books or internet, which basically is the same thing but online. Then James Watt improved the steam engine and fueled the industrial revolution and was blamed for killing jobs and corrupting society. You wouldn't have cars, trains, planes, factories or power grids today if this guy didn't have an idea that scared the living shit out of everyone dumb enough not to see the potential. Joseph Maurice Jacquard invented the programmable loom and people rioted, smashing his machines out of fear. So how is your Gap wardrobe doing these days? Alright? Then you have Carl Benz who built the first car, including the one I drive today, and furious crowds demanded a ban claiming it would wreck morality and spook the horses. Now go to your window, look outside and tell me how many horses you see. Then you have Thomas Edison who brought electric lights to the cities and gas companies went absolute apeshit saying it was unsafe and unnatural. And here's the irony. That's how you're able to watch this video and then go whine about it on Reddit with all your imaginary friends you never met in real life. Keep watching, I'm not fucking done yet. Ignaz Samelweis proved hand washing saves lives and doctors mocked him, destroyed his career and locked him up in an asylum. And what happened during COVID? We couldn't get alcohol for shit because of some panic buying morons. Then you have Nikola Tesla who tried to build a global wireless power grid and bankers killed it because they couldn't profit from free energy. How's that wireless iPhone car charger working for you right now? Then you have Baron Carl von Dreis who invented the bicycle and people called it dangerous, mocked him and got it banned in multiple cities. There are over 1 billion bicycles in the world today. That's more than one per nine people. Next was Karl-Heinz Brandenburg who developed MP3 and the music industry fought to kill it to protect their outdated business methods. And now we skipped straight to streaming Spotify while kids are asking daddy what's a CD. And now OpenAI and others built machines that can think and the weak-minded masses rise again and want it banned before it does their job better. Now here's the punchline. All those examples happened over centuries, but today we're not talking centuries, we're not even talking decades. Thanks to Moore's law, we're doubling computational power every 18 to 24 months. What does that mean? Well, that means that what feels like cutting edge today will be obsolete next year. The tech you're scared of right now will be an everyday norm in five years. AI, biotech, robotics, quantum computing, it's all converging and it's accelerating. So if you're sitting there thinking you've got time to wait and see, you don't. This shit will happen with or without you, just like what happened to 3D. Remember the polygon limits for game assets? Well, have you heard of nanites? Have you seen the recent Witcher 4 demo during the State of Unreal event? Go watch it, it's fucking insane. Progress is like weather. It's out there whether you like it or not. Renting that it's raining won't stop the storm. If you step outside without an umbrella, guess what? You are getting wet. You don't have to love every change, but you do have to stay current, stay sharp and stop being the guy who bends the bicycle because it goes too fast. Now let's bring it back to 3D. The same happened to Blender Bros when we started teaching Ngon based hard surface modeling workflows on YouTube and in our courses. People were throwing dumb comments left and right like this isn't real modeling or you're teaching bad habits and it happens still today which is mind boggling. Five years later, Blender Bros is the biggest brand for hard surface modeling in Blender space. Not an opinion, it's a fact. 
Why? Because we know how to teach and we know what the fuck we're doing. Most of these critics are some random folks tracing designs from art directors snapping quads over someone else's blueprint. That's not art, that's paint by number craftwork at best. Or some students who learned one or two things at their community college from a professor who teaches them outdated shit from early 90s. We teach N-Gons because it's the fastest, easiest way to understand 3D. Teaching isn't about gatekeeping complexity, it's about guiding people step by step, helping them gain real momentum without drowning in technicality. If you slap beginners with Blender UI, tool menus, design principles, workflows, and topology all at once, they will give up. That's not teaching, that's a torture. Good teaching adapts to the level of a student. Start with basics, build comfort, introduce pain gradually. That's how you grow, that's how you learn. And that's exactly how we structured our best-selling hard surface accelerator course for Blender. It's a very well thought out curriculum that you can complete in less than 14 days, starting just 30 minutes a day. It will teach you all the fundamentals of hard surface modeling and basics of design. You will learn all the tools, menus, full on hard surface modeling workflow, and also how to design cool stuff in Blender so you'll be able to sit down and start modeling on your own. We have over 4,000 students in the program and they love it. So if you want to learn Blender hard surface as efficiently as possible, go ahead and grab the course. The link is in the video description. And if you click the link right now, you'll get 50% off for good luck. Now going back to our video, if you always stick to what's comfortable, you are done. No progress, no growth, pure stagnation. Same with goals, set small ones, knock them down, then reach for bigger ones. If your first step is climbing Everest, you're not ambitious, you're stupid. That's why our methods work. We teach in a way that's direct, blunt and simple and that's why we get people results. You can read thousands of reviews on our website and those are not paraphrased, those are actual screenshots from emails, Discord, YouTube, Facebook, you name it. We've helped people land gigs, start studios, change careers. Obviously not everyone makes it because most people quit everything anyway, you know, that's life. But those who stick with it were able to change their lives. We teach fundamentals because that's who we serve newbies and intermediates trying to get better at hard surface modeling in Blender people transferring from other software or folks who simply need to learn 3D to improve their skill set. And only because some dumb muppet can't understand the logic behind the method, it does not make that method incorrect. They simply don't get it yet. And that's exactly a role of a good teacher to show you all the new stuff and explain why it works and how. And that's the same mindset you need with AI. AI isn't the enemy. AI is the new brush, the new chisel, the new paint, and if you think otherwise, then you're not a purist, you're just afraid. Crying that AI isn't real art while jerking off over photo bashing, stamp painting and kid bashing is peak clown logic. Go ahead and open ArtStation right now. Half of it is overlays, mega scans and paint overs from 3D base meshes. Again, you're just bitter that a bot works faster than you can or that someone knows how to use it well. And do not forget this simple truth. You learned art by copying from books, from teachers, from YouTube. AI does the same thing, just at scale. And at the end, results still depends on the user. 99% of art on the internet is absolute crap. So if you do not know the lighting, framing, composition, negative space, visual anchors, principles of design, etc., then no matter what, AI won't change that. Garbage in, garbage out, that's what's gonna happen. And the artists who embrace AI will replace those who don't. That's the truth. And here's the real issue. Modern society suffers from a soft, entitled mindset that confuses comfort with virtue. Pain is a part of progress. If you're not struggling a little, you are not growing. If you're not uncomfortable, you're not adapting. Changes are scary, I know that, but they are also stimulating us to think and react. Lazy and entitled mindset will lead you absolutely nowhere. For example, if I can't afford something, I don't whine about it. I ask, how can I afford it? Then I work my ass off towards that goal. If you think that way, you'll be too busy making progress 
and will have no time or intention to cry on the internet where no one equally busy and intelligent is actually listening. If a $57 course or a $28 add-on scares you, the problem isn't the price, it's your mindset. So stop blaming the tools, stop blaming trends, start taking responsibility, start solving problems, that's how you will grow. And most importantly, stop blaming AI for your narrow-mindedness and laziness. AI is here to help you improve. And if you can't adapt and understand it, then guess what? You are 100% correct. You will be replaced. But not because something changed. Because you didn't. Are you out?